time for another flag. Uh, I'm just on a roll with these flags. Uh, so I'm going to make one. This is one of the largest ones I've made so far. It's 24 inches wide, 14 inches tall. And here I'm showing you on my machine, the software on the machine, the actual cut order. So that real quick progression there. Software shows you the lead-ins, shows you the, all those dotted lines of the rapid traverse. And you can't really see the lead in on the stars, They're kind of small, but uh, I just barely enough room to fit in a lead in on, on those stars. But this is what it looks like on the control. So here it is uh, on the machine. I'm using a recycled uh, saw blade, about 0.175 inches thick is the is the plate thickness, a little less than 3 16 uh, It might be 0.18. Zero. Uh, I haven't mic'd this one. <clears throat> I just know the cut speeds for it. The small detail parts I cut around between 30 and 40 inches a minute, and uh, at 50 amps, 45 to 50 amps, and then long outside arcs and straight lines I cut it around 75 to 85 inches. And that's just at 50 amps. And sometimes I'll actually turn that down to 45 amps. 45 amps will cut this this material 3 16 no problem. Um, and it depends on the, this is the balance. Everything in plasma is a balance. The cut speed, the amperage, the, the cut height. It's all this, you know, you change one, it affects the other one. You know, nothing's, every, everything is interrelated. Every other data point affects the other data point. So <clears throat> it's just a common thing in life. You know, you change the amperage, you do have to increase your speed. Uh, you're going to get a lot of dross. Your curve width is going to increase. You increase the speed and leave the amperage the same. You get less dross, but your cut can get your curve can get more tapered and and affect the edge perpendicularity. Yeah. So everything's a everything's a compromise. Everything's a balance. You change one factor, you got to change the other ones. So when you're testing these things, you never just want to you never want to change like three or four things because <laughs> if it goes right you really don't know which one actually you know was the proper corrective action so you want to usually change one data point you know change the height do a test cut change the height a little more do a test cut and then once you get the height right then you can start playing okay you know increase your speed another 10 inches per minute and see what happens you know, adjust your amperage maybe a little bit. And there's charts that help you on this. You can find like, you know, for, for a quarter inch plate, maybe at, you know, 55 amps, or cutting of 50 inches per minute, pierce at 0 0.150 inches tall, cut at 1.07 or 0 0.06. So there's, there's lots of charts you find online to give you a starting point for a lot of these cut, the parameters to set up your cutting machine. And I got darker lens than I had on our previous video here, and I think I got some pretty good arc shots. I think I might have to go darker still. I think I might have to go one or two more lenses, lens number uh, darker than this, and then to really, so you can really just see that plasma jet, and it's a pretty amazing. I just have a short shot here of the uh, behind the lens. Now on the, uh, it's finishing up the cuts here, finishing one of the stripes, and uh, gonna finish the part. If you think about this, this plasma process is pretty amazing. Uh, it, it's a, it's a DC current that that, it, that the machine applies. That DC current uh, sparks over uh, compressed air, and that. Uh, DC current applied through a, a, a compressed air actually just vaporizes the, the metal. Vaporizes it. It's not an exaggeration. This is exactly what it does. And so that, that plasma arc is pretty amazing. I think something like 10,000 degrees, 20,000 degrees, something like that. But uh, it just vaporizes that steel, and this uh, the power density is pretty good. If you think about it, this is this is off of a two uh, two twenty uh, a plug, a two twenty volt plug, single phase. So it, it's just fascinating. And here it is. It's going to drop out. Uh, 
Uh, my speed was a little slow on this. I actually should have been more like 80 to 85 inches per minute. I think I had this at 70 or 75, but I had a 35 inch per minute, I think, for the small parts, for the detail for the stars, and then all the other long runs were 70, I think. I should have been, you'll see I have some shots behind it, but it came out pretty good. Here is after I cleaned it up. Now I didn't, I just ground the rust off this. I wasn't trying to get a decorative polish. I used a very kind of uh, a low grit number. It was 40 or 60. And I just, just removed the rust, surface rust on this. So I didn't try and make it shiny or do the pattern in a certain direction or get it a certain way. I, I, this was just to remove the rust. That's it. So it's kind of the look I was going for. And I might do one where I actually polish it, like get it like a mirror, but I'm not sure on that. I might do a heat colored finish one next for my next one, but these cuts came out really good. I'm liking the detail on the stars. I still think the stars should have been bigger, but hindsight is 2020. So here I am doing some, uh, just running a torch on this wood. I love the look of this. And it's pretty simple. You take a torch, you run it over the wood. And how close you get the torch, there's certain parts of that flame that are actually cooler than other parts. So depending on how close you get to the to the, the, the piece of wood you're heating, and then your speed. So if you stay in one spot, it obviously will catch fire. So you can, I'm just trying to highlight this grain. That's all I'm trying to do. And I, I'm not trying to get it uniform. If I was really trying to get it uniform, I'd probably use something with a wider, like a weed burner or something that's has a broader flame. Uh, but this the this little this little torch is very pointed. Uh, it's very concentrated. So you can see it's in some areas that are a little uneven, but this is gonna be mounted behind the blade. So you're not going to see all of it. You're just going to see small parts of it that, that come through the open parts of, of the of the plasma cut on the flag. So you look through the stars and you'll see this wood pattern. You look through the stripes, you'll see this wood pattern. So that's what I'm trying to do. Create a little bit of a, uh, accentuate this grain, add some different colors. And you can see I'm varying a little bit. I'm not trying to make it the same. I want some dark and some light. And this is just pine. This is one uh, one by six or one by one by eight pine I got from the local hardware store. And this is what it looks like after I'm done. I'm just hitting up a few spots, and you can see it's not uniform, and that's intentional. And here's the piece. Now I'm going to put some uh, linseed oil on this. Now, linseed oil is a great uh, a product for using for for the, especially for for this purpose. It gives the wood, it, it looks shiny. If you were to try and get a clear lacquer and do this, you'd have to apply a lot, or you'd have to use a, a, a polyurethane. I considered using a urethane for this, but I heard, uh, this linseed oil just works. It, it's so easy to apply. Uh, and it, uh, you can even use it, you can see use linseed oil on metal to preserve metal too. So, Here's the screws I'm going to do to attach the flag to these wooden pieces. So these are little brass screws. They have a countersink. They're a straight slot screw. These are wood screws. And so I'm going to drill a, a hole just big enough for the, the screw to pass through. And then I'm going to run a countersink over these. And then this is going to allow that, that screw to sit flush. So I'm just using my little handheld here. Uh, uh, these bits uh, work pretty well. They cut pretty fast. I don't use I don't use very high speed when I'm drilling these. Um, it, you turn the bit too fast, you can easily smoke these bits. So you run at a lower speed, get some good curls coming out of there. Slower speed, a higher pressure, and these these holes drill very fast. And I'm just checking the fit here, making sure that will drop through. Then I take my countersink. And I countersink these and I'll check them and make sure they're the right depth. And I run the countersinks at a slower RPM. Now, optically, it looks like I'm running the wrong direction here. That just has to do with the frame rate of the GoPro, but I had the, uh, I had the chamfer, uh, chamfer bit running the right direction. 
So I get that chamfered and then I just drop a screw in, verify that's gonna fit flush. And I just check that it's, that it's flush. Sometimes you'll hit it up again. And some of these details for what I'm doing, hey, these are all just aesthetic. Some people might actually prefer the screw, like a domed, a domed screw that sticks out, almost have the appearance of a rivet maybe. Uh, you know, something that looks like a machine screw. There's a lot of aesthetic details you could do on this that, you know, affect a little bit of the of the final product. It depends on what you're looking for. And I pre-drilled these. If you notice this pine, it's it's prone to split. It splits really easily. Especially, look at how close I am to those edges. So you want to pre-drill. You always want to pre-drill on something like this. So you just, you look at the, you can measure the shank with some calipers of your screw. And you want to make sure you're right around that, that diameter of the screw. The root diameter. And that'll keep that wood from splitting. It won't affect, it won't lessen the strength of the screw. I didn't get any splits on this. I'm drill These screws are very close to this edge, and I didn't get any splitting at all. So, always pre-drill, especially with pine. And there's that. And I'm putting in the final one here. And this came out really nice. Flame uh, pattern on the wood. The linseed oil really gave a little, a light, a little bit of luster. And I considered going back and actually regrinding this and making the, the steel a little bit more uniform. And let me, what would you think? Do you think do you prefer a little bit of variation like this, where it's a little more, it's kind of random, not really. You can kind of see, you know, this is something I just put a quick, remove the rust and then. And then moved on. Now I ha I'm going to hang this. It's going to hang on a wall. So I got this little hanger here with these little with these little nails, and I measured, found the center point, and nailed these in. And these hangers are sawtooth. You could easily shift it back and forth to get a good, depending on where the center of gravity of your part is. So uh, these things are very strong. They hold a lot of weight. This this plate was pretty heavy, so. I wanted something pretty strong for, for the hang on the wall. Now, I'm also concerned about damaging uh, some of the paint. This wood would hang down, and, and if it moves or shifts, it might uh, damage the drywall. So I put these little, these little neoprene bumpers on there. So this is the finished part, guys. This is it. Some shots of it in the kitchen. It's kind of in a low, lower light condition. I'm kind of looking at it. I really, really love the detail of these stars. I, I know they should have been bigger. But I still, I'm still pretty happy with it. I like the look of the wood. It's got a little bit of, sh it's got a little bit of sheen to it. The wood does from the linseed oil. And here's some shots. Here's some shots outside. It's pretty, uh, it's a pretty sunny day, so you can see all the variegations on, on grounded. I really didn't have any type of rhyme or reason. I just, it's a little random. But uh, this is in, 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 uh, in out, outdoor, in a high light condition. It's pretty sunny outside. And this one came out really good. I like the screws. They fit flush. They're brass. A little bit of color on that face. Gives a little bit of differences. And here it is. Finished product hanging in, hanging in, my, in my house. So this is, a bigger, this is a bigger flag, guys. It's 24 inches wide. About 14 inches tall. And I really, I almost wanted to make this for a desk or something. It was just too big. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to hang this up. And I love the brass screws. I think it's a nice touch. I love seeing the pattern of the wood. And I thought I could have, maybe I should have spent more time in really making it really polished. But I think it's just in a roughened state, it's just more vibrant. It's a little bit, it's a little bit on the rough side. What do you guys think? I appreciate you guys hanging in this video. It's a little longer than I wanted to, but I just wanted to show all these different processes, what you can do. This came out just beautiful. I love I love this piece. And 
A lot of times I give these away to people for gifts. I don't think I'm going to give this one away. I'm keeping it. It's going to stay right on my wall. I really appreciate you guys hanging in and watching this video. It means a lot to me. I appreciate your time. Thank you. You guys have a good one.